In this video we'll be looking at how an individual firm would calculate its different types of costs, how it would calculate its revenue and therefore also how it would work out its profit. But before we actually get to those different types of costs, you might actually hear the costs referred to as being costs in the short run or costs in the long run. So I think it's important just to get that distinction clear in economics when we talk about the short run and the long run, what is it that we're actually talking about? So in the short run, we're talking about a period of time across which at least one of a firm's factors of production is fixed. And generally speaking, it's usually going to be the capital that's fixed, but firms are able to vary their labour input in terms of that factor of production, which if you think about it is relatively logical because I would suggest if a firm wanted to increase its scale of production, um, it could probably more quickly and more easily do that by adding to that labour input, maybe getting some of their workers to work over time, possibly even adding some temporary staff into that labour input, whereas to expand the scale of operations using additional um, sort of big machinery and expanding to new premises is going to take a significant, significantly higher investment of kind of time in order to, to resolve that and in order to do that. So in the short run, we're saying at least one of the firm's factors of production is fixed and generally it's, it's labour that's the, the one that's, that's able to be varied. In the long run, all factors of production can be varied. So land, labour, capital, enterprise, we can expand our production by varying any and all of those different factor inputs. So over the long run, we can expand by opening new factories, buying new machinery and increasing that labour input as well. I'm just going to use this table here now then to talk you through the different types of costs that an individual firm might face and what each one would mean and how each one would be calculated. So this table that I've drawn up here, the first column is just showing units of output. So that's in thousands. So we've got thousands of units of output increasing as we go down each row. And then the first column in terms of the, the costs is the total fixed costs. So fixed costs for a firm are costs which do not change directly with output. And you can see that as you go down the rows on the table, the fixed costs are always £200,000 on each of the rows. And so those are costs like rent and utilities. It doesn't matter how much output you produce as a firm, the fixed costs are going to be unchanging. They're always going to be the same. So that's in contrast to this next column, which is the variable costs, and they are costs which do vary directly with output. So the more output you produce, the higher your variable costs are going to be. And so for variable costs, think raw materials, the actual materials that you used to put into your products which you're producing. And the more units of output you produce, the higher your variable costs are going to go. And so then to get your total costs, you are simply going to add fixed costs to variable costs to find total costs. So fixed costs plus variable costs would be your formula for calculating the total cost for a business. We're then on to looking at the average costs. And you've got here three different types of average costs. You've got the average variable cost, the average fixed cost, and the average total cost. But for each one, you are dividing the cost by the quantity of output. So with average variable costs, you're taking your variable cost and dividing by output. With average fixed costs, you've got your um, fixed costs divided by output. And probably the most common one, which you would, would have to use um, most frequently, would be the average total cost. Sometimes you just refer to that as the average cost, which would be the total cost divided by your output. So that is the average cost per unit of output produced, a really, really important figure for businesses to be able to look at and use. And another final really important cost for a business to be able to consider is its marginal cost. And when we talk about the margin, the marginal cost, we're talking about the cost of producing one additional unit of output. 
which is really critical because actually that is going to be what all of any business's decisions are going to be based on, how it's going to affect that marginal cost. Because actually the, the previous cost, the cost for all the previous units they've produced are kind of gone, they've already been spent. But when you're making the decision as to whether to produce that one additional unit of output, you're going to be really interested in what this marginal cost is. So the marginal cost is calculated by that change in the total cost divided by the change in output. Okay, so you can see a change in total cost going from 270,000 to 340,000. That's a 70,000 increase in total costs. And the output there is increased by 1,000 units. So 70,000 divided by 1,000 in that case gives us a marginal cost of um, 70 pounds. So moving on then to how a business generates its revenue from its sales and therefore also makes its profit. I've got a very similar table here with the units of output uh, increasing as we go down the rows in the table and I've just left the total cost in but taken all of the other types of costs out because that total cost is going to be needed in order to calculate that profit figure. Um, so on to the, the other side, so in terms of the sales, we're going to be interested in how much that business is selling each individual unit for. And so you can see on my table here, as the units of output increases, that selling price is going down. And that is usually going to be the case when you see tables like this, because in order for a business to encourage more customers to buy their products and therefore in order to sell more output, it is going to need to reduce that selling price in order to incentivize more customers to, to come and to purchase that output. And so that's actually the reason for why we have that downward sloping demand curve. We've got as selling price goes down, quantity demanded increases. So the selling price there is going down as we increase the quantity each time. The next column I've got here is for our total revenue. And so that is calculated by selling price multiplied by quantity sold. So my selling price here of 200 pounds multiplied by the quantity of output of 1000, which will give us the total revenue received from the sales of those products. And so you can see that going down each row in my table. And then the average revenue is calculated by the total revenue divided by quantity. So like we did with the cost data, we did the cost divided by the quantity of output. With the average revenue, we're simply doing the revenue divided by the quantity of output. And you should be able to see that in that column on the table, that is actually perfectly exactly the same as our selling price. And average revenue is essentially the same thing as selling price. Um, and the reason for that is because if you're doing selling price times quantity to get your total revenue, and then you're doing total revenue divided by quantity to get your average revenue, then you're just back to the selling price to start off with. And so later on in the course, when we get to drawing up these different curves and using this data to, to draw cost and revenue curves, you'll find that the average revenue curve, because of what I've just described there with selling price, is actually equal to the demand curve. And so then finally, you've got your profit column and profit for any business is calculated by the total revenue, all of the money coming in from sales minus the total cost. So we've got our total revenue here minus the total cost here, which will give us our figure for profit or indeed loss. And so that's what these figures in brackets here are showing that it's a loss and the figures that are um, positive and not in brackets um, are profits earned by the business.